Hello and welcome to the second podcast where we are in discussion with Ted Everett about his book My Life as a Photographer with Massey Ferguson. My name is Campbell Scott, formerly of Massey Ferguson myself, and in this episode we are going to talk about Ted's time at the Fletch. The Fletch was the name given to Harry Ferguson Limited's Building and Operations Centre in Coventry, so-called because it was adjacent to the Fletchamstead Highway. Well, Ted, we're back in the, the Massey Ferguson Club, and um, I see you've got the, the, the customary pint of John Spisty hand, so that's not <laughs> Of course. Oh, um, I'm additional. <laughs> what, what, what we'd like to uh, talk about in, in this session is the, the early years, and by the early years, I mean from the start of your career in what was Harry Ferguson Limited, and then going right up through to when it became Massey Ferguson, uh, and obviously um, the Harry Ferguson place, uh, famously known as the Fletch, closed, and then you all moved to Banner Lane. Mm. So I think the starting point is, we, we go back to 1952, it must have been a quite a strange time in Coventry, really. I mean, the war was only seven years well, finished. Well, that's right, it's, uh, you know, short while, but... Uh... No, I think uh, <coughs> the way it started was when I had uh, time off uh, sc school for one afternoon. Um, I asked the, uh, my teacher and, and also the headmaster at that time, could I have a, a bit of time off in the afternoon so I can go and have a look for a job, which I was due to leave uh, school at the Easter uh, in April 1952 so they uh, they checked that I was up to date with all the work and so off I went and uh, I should have uh, ended up on Fletcherstead Highway and the first sort of there were several fact factories along there at the time there was Whitman, there was Matrix uh, like the Comedy Gage and Tool and the Standard Motor Company and then there was this one Harry Ferguson so I, I, I approached the, uh, the gateman at that time, who I got to know fairly well, Tommy Pearson his name was, and I asked what's the chances of, you know, I'm looking for a job, is there any job vacancies? And he said, yes, he said, well, you go over there to the reception. Mm -hmm. So I duly went across the reception there, and who met me was in all in his full uniform, Sergeant Major Jones. <laughs> and he lived not far away from me right. in Earlsdon at the mm -hmm. time and he said yes yeah, sit down there young man I'll get somebody from uh, personnel department because they called it personnel department in mm -hmm. them days and, uh, and anyway within about 10 minutes uh, this lady came through the door her name was Mrs Worth and we had a little chat what my favourite subjects were at school and what I did and uh, the hobbies and that sort of thing and when we came to hobbies at the end she said have you got anything else that you in hobby why I said well yes on most Sundays I said I'd like to get uh, a little camera out I said it's my auntie's camera and go and take photographs so I, I like to take photographs of it and she immediately should have jumped on to me and said well she says we do have a photographic department here and they are looking for a young lad oh. to train up. Mm -hmm. uh, we, well, you know, if you did, we could um, mm -hmm. go down and have a have a look if, if you would like. That took me back quite a bit because I didn't really know what to expect when she was interviewing. I was thinking of, I don't know, probably going into a workshop or right. something. Yeah. And this just came out of the blue and I immediately said, yes, that's fine. And then anyway, she rang up uh, that department, the photographic department at that time, and, um, and within minutes we were walking down to the, the department and we popped in and I met uh, this guy, Mr. Felton, who in the end I should have owed my career to. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, um, <clears throat> he showed me this big glazing machine, which I'd already had a look at, and explain to Mrs. Worth what that machine did. And she didn't know what to think, you know, uh -huh. whether she believed me or not. And she said, can you repeat to Mr. Fulton what you've told me about this machine? And I told her, she said, 
he's perfectly right. He said, would you like to put one or two of those prints on? I said, oh. Oh, oh. I said, I don't, don't want to really spoil anything. He says, you won't spoil nothing. Like you said, you just put them on like what you've just said. So I did. And now the drum they went and I put them over on the table. I said, this, this is where they'd flatten out, wouldn't they? Mm. And he said, yes. And so... What, can you remember what they were? They, they, well, oh, they, they were all T20 tractors. Oh, T20 yeah, I stuff, can't yeah. remember. No, no, were, I mean, but, but it, was a, it, was a, it was a T20 tractor. Oh, yeah, that yes. was, it was only that. And implements, trailer, right. trailers sort of stood out in that tier, and, and ploughs. And at that point, would you have known what a T20 was? Or not was, really. Not really. A really. tractor, to me, mm, that, yes. that was it. You mm. know, I mean, I didn't know nothing, know anything about tractors. Um... But uh, and then he showed me around the dark room and whatever, uh, and um, had a look round and he, he said, "Well, what do you think?" I said, "Oh yes, yes, I, you know, I uh, just uh, just like the idea of doing mm. seeing the production of the, the photographs, the prints and things." Now, and, did, uh, did we, we know you obviously ended up getting a job because yeah. you, you were there for for over sixty years, but. But, but my question is, you, you came past all these factories on the Fletcham State Highway. Uh, which did, I knew Did of. you actually call into them? No, no, I didn't. Ah. I didn't. No. No. I, 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 arrived, I wonder what I drew would, you to Harry Ferguson then? No idea. Ah. It was uh, it was just the first one I came to as I got off the bus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it cost me a penny, I think. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, well, well, I tell you what. I got it, off the it, bus it, and that was the first tractor I saw. Uh, f- not tractor, first the factory. first factory I saw. Well, thank goodness the bus stop was, was well, near the Harry Ferguson By, by the Standard place. Cinema, like, yes. and that, that building is still there today. That's right. <laughs> you know, and uh, now it was just... Now, tell, well, us, tell, us, first. tell us about, I think you mentioned it in the book, but tell us about when you when you got the letter... Um... Well, I, uh, I, uh, I said, yes, I, I'd, love, I'd love the job. Mm. And, uh, OK. Uh... And that said, right, we'll, we'll let you know in due course then. You know, we'll, we'll send you a letter and when you can start. Mm-hmm. Not just let you know, like they do these days, mm-hmm. and you don't hear nothing. Mm. No, they said, we'll send you a letter and uh, with what you'll get and uh, when you'll start. The next morning, I was just coming up the road. I'd just finished my paper round before I went to school. And the uh, my father came out of the door. He was off on way to work, and it was it was it was just about a half seven in the morning, mm-hmm. and I just finished, and I was just coming home, and he said, "There's a letter just arrived for you." I said, "Oh, I wonder what that is." You know, not thinking about what I'd done the day before, mm-hmm. I opened the letter. There it was. <coughs> um, we're pleased to accept. Um, you know you. Application for the job or your interview, we pleased with the interview. Uh, can you start April the sixteenth, nineteen fifty-two? This was right. uh, nine o'clock. Mm-hmm. Oh God, yes. Oh, I took the letter to school and showed the my teacher and the headmaster, and mm-hmm. they were so proud. Oh yeah. They didn't know how I'd done it within <laughs> that time. So I, I certainly didn't know how I did it. Yeah. And. It sounds a bit like my own um, <coughs> successful application to Massey Ferguson. Yeah. No, none of my teachers could understand that I haven't got the job yeah, either. Well, they are, you But see. anyway, I think in your case it was a bit more and, and, clear and, cut. And, 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 of course, at nine o'clock we have the assembly, mm. and I was called up onto the stage. Really? And there was the headmaster called me up uh-huh. and said, this young man, Ted, well, everybody knows Ted. Well, he, I was a school captain at the time. Mm. <laughs> Ted went out to look for work yesterday mm-hmm. and here he, he's got a letter he's got yeah. a job a and he after. starts at Easter yeah and I just felt a little bit oh yeah <laughs> I was lost for words I can imagine yeah <laughs> and, and that's how it's that's how I got the, in the job in the first place great so so then you know you, you arrive in there on the, on, on the first day at work and um yeah what was the Fletch like? It, I mean, they didn't build anything there, did they? It was, it was, it was more the offices. That I think it was, was main, it was mainly uh, all offices, mm-hmm. uh, like uh, there was a publicity department, mm-hmm. you know, uh, there was service department, export department, um, sales areas, uh, quite quite a large size office and personnel mm-hmm. department down at the 
far corner. Mm-hmm. Then there was upstairs, there was the canteen and the director's offices and um, and then at the other end of where the offices were, the where the publicity department, the accounts and that sort of mm-hmm. thing, you went into where there was a PR office, then there was the print room and then with the then there was the postal department and then the transport department which was quite a big area and behind that there was a service uh, service workshop mm-hmm. and then across from there uh, over the other side of the petition was the big uh, workshop where the the, big the, workshop. Yeah, yeah it was quite a big it was mm-hmm. fairly you know nothing like a ballet you know yeah. uh, where all the fitters were the machinists and then on the other side of it was where they did all the development and, oh, right. you know, uh, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was, uh, but I, I gradually got to know that. But when I arrived that morning, I had to go straight to uh, into the reception mm-hmm. and then personnel came down, Mrs. Mm-hmm. Worth came again and uh, she took me then down to the department and that's it. Mm-hmm. Here he is. <laughs> He's arrived at nine, nine o'clock, or probably about nine thirty by the time I got into the department. Uh, and then that was it. And I think uh, they just showed me round ag- again. And then they would say, Well, we'll start you off by doing what you did with your interview, mm-hmm. uh, finishing the prints off when the, the prints had been done and washed, uh, stamping and numbering. And because uh, the, the boss man did say, and usually around about ten o'clock we like a cup of tea. Oh, so yeah. that's one of my first tea, oh, yeah. tea time. Making the tea, yes. <laughs> right? and, yeah. And again at three o'clock. Yeah. And he used to say, and there is a little um, uh, a girl that comes round at those times, what they call the tea trolley. Mm-hmm. So you could get the tea off that, which is we like to make our own. Oh, so right. in other words, so we we got yeah. our own. Yeah. Part of the kettle, and uh, it was. If you wanted any cakes or that sort of thing, the the girl would knock on the door, you know, and right. you'd run out and because. <laughs> and then day, well, especially afternoon, I'd probably nip out and get a couple of donuts or something oh, to go every day, or some sort of cake. No, I mean, so that was one of my first yeah. duties: was was yeah, finishing the prints up, yes. putting a gloss on them, yes. stamping a number because every print had to be stamped and numbered. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so that was my first two or three weeks or so. What what did you learn about? I mean, you've certainly done Harry Ferguson Limited. I mean, did you wonder who Harry Ferguson was? Or, well, I, or, uh, or, I, I, I I don't really can't sort of remember what I was thinking who he was mm-hmm. or whatever. It was just I worked for Harry Ferguson. Yes. Yeah. And then. Um, after a, after a while, I started, they showed me these, these cameras, how to use them, and then eventually, uh, I, after a few months, I would go in, at the end of the day, probably about, around about four o'clock time, mm-hmm. go over into the showroom with this camera and just practice taking them on a tripod. Mm-hmm. And what did they a, have in the showroom in those days? Oh, in the showroom was immaculate. Yeah. They had, most of the implements that it were made, right. like most Harry Ferguson implements mm-hmm. like the ploughs, the trailers, mm-hmm. uh, the drills, yeah. you know, whatever, the mowers, that yeah. sort of thing. It's quite and a it big was, showroom. Oh yes, it was a fair, yeah. it was a fair size yeah. showroom yeah. because they used to have visitors come round. Right. You see, but I used to go in at four o'clock each time because all the visits would be finished then. Right. Or four thirty when I just had, I just had a, an hour there, and I did this for. Two or three, couple of months or something, and then one afternoon, uh, well, uh, before that, before I met Barry Ferguson, I used to do prints for the press release. Mm-hmm. Used to keep the files full of about twenty prints, mm-hmm. and one of the, and then one morning, Bill Felton, the boss said, now I'd like you now to do a print of Harry Ferguson. Oh, yeah. This is the master one which I took. 
Right. I still have that negative today in my mm. files at home. And he showed me the technique of how to do the print from this enlarger. Oh, yeah. And anyway, I, I did around about 20 prints or so for the press thing. And then it, later on that morning, uh, I was asked to go down to the reception area to collect something that had been delivered for the department. So off came my white coat, put my jacket on, and in the days you always wore a tie. Okay, and so mm -hmm. down the corridor I went, and then round the corner, Harry Ferguson company was just outside the showroom. This was, oh yeah, but I didn't know. I just looked, and I thought <laughs> that looks. It, it, I think it, it is, and because we got close to get closer together, and he said, uh, "Good morning, young man. Are you in or out?" And I. I thought, S uh, sorry, sir, um, I'm not quite sure what you mean. He says, you've got one flap in your jacket and one flap out of your jacket. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. And from this day onwards, uh, I've always, I always sort of made sure oh, yes. my flaps was one way or the other. Oh, right. uh, so that's where I first met him. Ah. But another occasion mm -hmm. was when I was in, go back to when I was in the showroom doing this, he walked in mm -hmm. around about 4.30. Right. And it was purely just very often I was told that he was, he very often came in there to have a look round to make sure everything was in place, mm -hmm. nice and tidy, no rubbish. And I happened to be in there and he just said, uh, the word sort of, is everything all right, young man? And I thought, yes, sir, yes, because then I knew who it was. Oh, yeah. I said, yes, sir. And he just, he carried on. That's all he said. Mm. And he purely went, and he went out the other door, the back door sort of thing. And that was, that's how I come across. Oh, I got good. to sort of yeah. know him. Then, I mean, later, how, how would then later on... Him? How would you describe him, you know, just from those... Oh, he, he, he wasn't a very tall man. He was just a sort of an average yeah. sort of... He wasn't tall. He was he was sort of slimish, you know. Mm. Was he quite personable or...? He was quite... I mean, was he a character or was he quite well, a quiet I, I, man? I, I, no, he just seemed hard... It's hard to say, really, yeah. because I was a young... Yeah, man, I know what I, you mean, yeah. I, I didn't really... He was no, I was anyway. just a little bit... When he spoke, mm -hmm. I, I'd got to make sure I <laughs> oh, yeah. said the right words <laughs> if I had the chance. But uh, he didn't. He didn't allow me any time to speak. No. Now I know you developed a great affection for the the, the Ferguson tractors, so the T Twenty. But I know that because when when you did the launch of the book, you you were very insistent that we had we had one there and. Um, because you, you said that was the, the tractor. Um, did, did you do a lot of photography? Um, that, at that time, no, I was, I was doing, not the first couple of years or so. No. I, I, well, I, I, I was, I should have started them with a fibre four camera mm -hmm. uh, into the service workshop. Right. It's more detailed. Uh, because work. that I was doing, there's more mm -hmm. detailed shots mm -hmm. of the tractors being split. Mm -hmm. uh, Sam Floyd, who was the foreman at that time, um, used to, um, do the service work mm -hmm. in the shop, and they were using Churchill tools at oh, the time. Yes, yes, right. And so I, I got to cover all the photographs. I used to take the photographs and mm -hmm. covered all the procedures, right, of the tools with a tractor split. You know, on the on the rail tracks, yes, and things like that, and the axles. So and presumably, at that stage, some, like some like of that. the more senior photographers were doing the, the glamorous. So, yeah, there, yeah, there was Tony Whitehead to see doing the more senior photography uh, at the time. Yes, <clears throat> and um, but it used to help me a lot there, mm -hmm. um, and so I, so I did. That's how I started to develop taking photographs mm -hmm. with the. The other item where I used to go in the showroom, use mm -hmm. a smaller camera to do sort of like it like sort of press work. Mm -hmm. And then came one day when a couple of visitors came in the showroom and I got this Super Iconto roll film camera, mm -hmm. eight exposure on the uh, 120 film. 
Um, apparently, <laughs> the lady was the daughter of one of the directors. Mm -hmm. And I think it was Mr. Young. But I'm not 100% sure of that. But anyway, one of the daughters was an American serviceman. Right. And she said, could you take a picture of us, please? Oh, yes. And uh, I immediately said, yes, I certainly will, yes. Do you want to stand by this tractor? Because I was by the, a TE20 tractor. Mm -hmm. And she said, that would be perfect. Mm -hmm. So that was my first picture. Oh, yes. Which is if you know, as well. Which is, yes. which is of a job. And yes. And, she, and uh, um, so I took the picture, mm -hmm. and when I got back, I told the boss, you see, mm -hmm. and he, he knew, but the boss knew exactly who it was. Right. And so the next day I processed the film, and I mm -hmm. done, we have he to said, remember, you would do the prints, and I did the prints. Yeah, we have to remember, this time you're only, what, 17 now? Yeah, I wasn't even that. No, you weren't even 17. <laughs> you know, I, I think I was thrown in at the deep end, but that was good. It was There's good. one thing I wanted to ask, Ted. Um, during during the period, not long after you um, you started, the, there was the merger with Massey Harris. Uh, did how did that affect things? Was there any, you know, I mean, obviously you were a Ferguson man and you were in the yeah. Harry Ferguson place. But yeah, she's fifty four. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, did, did that register with you or uh, did not it make really. any changes? It didn't no. really because. No. I, it, you know, a young lad, I, you know, I yeah. wasn't into those sort of things no, then. The it was just, so, um, yeah. it became to Massey Harris Ferguson. Right. It, I think it was the back end of 1954, about September time. Yeah, but what time. I mean is, you didn't you suddenly get it a load of red have... equipment in the showroom as well as the grey stuff? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no it, it still was never, very much that kept. never happened. No, it was still kept. No, as the separate. only thing that happened was about then 1956, I think it was. Mm -hmm. They got rid of the showroom. Uh, really? Maybe just like before that, yeah, and they no. made it into sort of a, a canteen. Oh, yeah. And they also put a badminton court in oh, there. Really? Which, which I immediately joined. Uh, okay, I, of course, yeah. And I played badminton yeah. for Massey then. Yeah. And of course it was Massey Harris Ferguson. Uh, yeah. No, there was no red machines whatsoever. Right. Not in the showroom. Okay. Now, one of the things I know a lot of the Ferguson fans will be interested in will be when you, you were asked to go and photograph the LTX tractor. Well, I wasn't asked to photograph them. Ah. It was just... I was asked to come accompany my boss. Mm -hmm. In other words, carry the tripod, carry right. the case... Come down with me and set it up the night, and you know, because I've got to take pictures. This the boss has got to take the pictures right. of the LTX of in, into the engineering workshop. Mm. In, is this in <coughs> where they did all the development in, and this whatever. Is Lane or in no, Fletch? no, this is at Fletch. This is, this is Fletch. all at Fletch. Yeah, and there we were duly met by uh, um, Alex Patterson, who oh, yes. was uh, you know he, he, he was a good friend of Annie Ferguson. Yeah. Of course, and that's how I met uh, Alex. And I, and I knew him for years after that. Mm -hmm. that. I'd even met his son and that sort of thing. So we met, and he, he explained these are the tractors, and this is how we've lined up what we've been taking. Mm -hmm. And I was just listening in. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and the foreman there was Bill Beatty, uh, and he said, um, Of course, we. I brought this big white sheet down as well, or two big white sheets, and then we got them to put them up as a background behind right. the tractors. Mm -hmm. right? And the LTX one was the first one, yeah. and then there was two or three other tractors. What did it look like? <coughs> well, it looked like a, a bigger a bit. version of the 20. Yeah, yeah. There's like slight differences, but mm -hmm. at that age, I, you know, I wasn't sort of... Like in the design area, that sort no, of no, thing. No, no, no. But I mean, it, did it look impressive? I mean, uh, <coughs> oh, it looked a good, yeah. impressive line up. Yeah, that was something you're yeah. fine. You're, yeah, you're, yeah. you're, you're getting a bit of, you know, you know, you're doing too much talking and not yeah, enough thinking excited. today. Yeah. You know, it's a side well, no, the thought which, of the um, Anyway, yeah. Alex Fashion and he told Bill Felton, mm -hmm. you know, this is what was needed. And anyway, um, and just as you were saying that. Uh, another guy came uh, through uh, from uh, engineer with, with Jack Root. He was another foreman, and then they put this white sheet up. Yeah, and then I set all the camera up, and mm -hmm. they all sort of uh, 
ready for Bill Felton to put to take. And then just at that time, the Alex Patterson's secretary came out of the office and shouted, well, not shouted, but came up to Bill Felton and said, you required on the phone, Mr. Felton. So anyway, he nipped to the phone into the office. And then he came back out and he said, Ted, I've got to go up to, uh, my boss wants to see me, urgent. I've got to go up to, you know what, you could take this line up of pictures, an individual, whatever. I said, yeah, sure can. And so, right, so I set it up and I was just about to to um, do the picture and then all of a sudden the door opened and who walked in was Mr Ferguson himself. Blame me. So, and I was asked to stand back yeah. whilst they had a discussion mm -hmm. um, with Alex Patterson uh, and Ali Ferguson and probably a couple of other engineering guys mm -hmm. and... Uh, so I stood that, stood back for for a good twenty minutes, half an hour, and I thought, well, the boss man will be back soon. He'll be doing the pictures. But no, all of a sudden, Ali Ferguson just said, "Right, okay," and he walked past me. He said, "You're the young man that's uh, in the showroom uh, sometimes, aren't you?" I said, uh, "Yes, sir." He didn't say anything else, no. off he went. All oh, right. Did he, seem, did, <laughs> so he there. Seem, did he seem pleased with what he saw when he was so well, he he saw seemed the to be, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, therefore, well, that's when I sort of took those pictures, what you see mm. today. Mm. And, uh, and Bill Felton came up when I'd finished. And I think he, he ended up just, he did take one of the lineup of them all. But oh, I, how I, many I did were the there? original. Yeah, how many were there? Tractors. Yeah, were well, they all the LTXs or this? I can't. No, no, there was a Ford St. Major. Ford? Oh, all right. I'm sure there was a Ford there. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a, I think there was a T twenty, and there was about four tractors. Oh, I see. Right. But the LTX, I know which that was. That was the yeah. first one. Yeah. Yeah. So really? that's so uh, really what you see today are the pictures I took mm -hmm. as a young lad, and I have them pictures now. In the photo. Oh. Well, you know, the great days at the Fletch, but it it seems very sad that, that, that it all came to an end, I suppose, in one way, and then you had the, the big move to Banner Lane. Well, um, yes, it, uh, it was announced, because, uh, you know, as you know, late in 57 it was announced it was Massey Ferguson, mm -hmm. and then it was a lot of tractors came the next year of uh, Massey Ferguson. Yeah. Jackals and all. Then <clears throat> later on that year, it was announced that uh, we would be going up to the Standard Motor Company at Panel Lane. Right. We would all be moving. Mm -hmm. uh, that and people said, Ooh. a lot of people thought, mm, I, ain't, I don't, I'm not keen on that idea. Well, mm -hmm. it was like a, it's like a family sort of mm -hmm. place. Yeah. The Fletch was. Mm -hmm. Everybody helped each other. You know, everybody knew each other, and mm -hmm. it was, as I say, it, uh, it was always a good atmosphere. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so, but the day came, of course, and then uh, I remember the day it was in uh, it was in September 1959 when we eventually went up to Banner Lane. Mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime, a few days, we took uh, our equipment. Mm -hmm. It was well, we took it was shipped up to the photographic department, mm -hmm. which the Standard Motor Company had. So we did a swap. I see. They had our department, and we had their department. Oh, so all the and Standard the, Motor Companies in Banner Lane, they moved the, into our place. Oh, they moved up to the flesh. and we moved into theirs. Yes, but we had the best deal because really? theirs was more modern oh. than ours, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and so. <laughs> There was a big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, there was several. Well, there's one, two, three, four sort of dark rooms. Two for processing, mm -hmm. two for printing, and and print finishing. Then there was a huge finishing room, the general room at the back where we could put the dryers. Uh, it was what oh, four times as big as what we just left. So we had the best deal. We also had a cinema, and then we also a, a sort of 
sort of a cum like studio behind mm-hmm. the cinema. Right. So we had huge yeah. space. Yeah. But I mean, we, you know, Ted, as we come to the end of this um, session and, and what we're going to call the early years, what, what's your closing memories of the Fletch and oh, the, Harry Ferguson? Oh, the days. Well, I'll never forget because, I mean, that's where I met the wife, oh. uh, Kate, you see. <laughs> yeah. And we, we could still discuss mm-hmm. people that weren't there. Mm-hmm. We still remember the names and we can, we can still discuss mm-hmm. the times there. It, yeah. and, uh, it's something I mean, that I would... You know, as long as I live, like, uh, no, they were great days. They were great, they were great days. Yeah. Okay, well, Ted, we'll, you know, in the next session, we'll move on and start talking about the Banner Lane years. So, so for, for this session, that's, that's from me, Campbell Scott. Thanks for listening. And from Ted, as he takes a final little sup of his pint in this one. <laughs> what have you got to say? Just to clear my throat, that is. Just to clear my throat, <laughs> The trouble is, I get too excited about Fletch because they were brilliant do. days. I know you do. There's not many people who know of them days, but I do. Ted, thank you very much indeed, and yep. we'll we'll see you next time to okay. talk about, talk about yep. the banner later. All the best, everybody.